We're gonna do this little bird, uh, this egret on the bank. So here we go. I have an eight by 10 um, canvas panel. These are the Centurions. Really nice panel to paint one. It's linen, so it's got a really fine grain to it. Triple primed. Uh, I really love them. Jerry's Artorama carries them. For the paint, we're going acrylics. I have cad yellow, cad orange, cad red uh, light. Don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but we'll see. Alizarin crimson, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and I got some titanium white. Uh, let me just make a quick reference photo where the bird's going to be. So the water is going to go up. Let me move this off a little bit. How are you guys doing today? So bank of the water is going to be up like this, kind of curvy a little bit. Uh, so the edge of the bank, the camera's in front of me, so I have a kind of awkward angle here. Kind of like this. Okay. Let's put this bird a little bit on Jenny Craig here. Make it lose a little bit of weight. There you go, Jenny 20. Here we go. All right. Uh, I'm using these uh, Princeton Polytip brushes. These black ones here is what I'm going to be mainly using. I got Filbert. I'm not going to use this big fatty over here. I'm going to use, let me see, this little guy. Might use this little guy. And this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Okay. All right. So I got my water. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with perhaps the background first. Uh, so let me show you again. You got these reddish tones and then these purples on the bottom. And this is probably going to be somewhere in a dark, darker purple area. And we got some greens. So what I'm going to do is just block in, take out all this white first. And then we're going to start gauging the colors. So here we go. All right, first with the reds. So I'm gonna do, looks to me a little bit like, a um, little bit of burnt sienna. Some yellow into it. I'm not too worried about the, the exact color right off the bat. It's not really my main concern. It's about getting the values right to tell you the truth. Uh, maybe add a little bit of ultramarine blue in here. Maybe a more of a lizard crimson. And like I said, if you're just joining me, this is gonna be like a really loose style of painting. Sienna, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of ultramarine. You notice how I made it even more, more brown here. So as it gets darker, the gradients in color changes. It turns into more darker tones so uh, to that mix making a darker brown by using just um, ultramarine blue burnt sienna and a little bit of a uh, lizard crimson and the purple that you saw earlier we're gonna work on that afterwards right now it's really not a non determining fa determining factor my brush is not really not that wet, just damp. And I'm using the corner, blah, the edge of my brush here, like in this 15, 20 degrees angle. So just going all over the place. All right, burn sienna, make more of that mix. 
Lizarin. Oh, that's too much. Let's add a little bit of light red to that. Add a little bit of water in my brush. And from time to time, I'll look to see if you have any questions. Um, when it's live like this, I don't always get to see the questions right off the bat, but sometimes I will take a break to look and see if somebody asked anything. All right, now you gotta remember with acrylics, unlike oils, acrylics don't have the same covering power, meaning they don't, um, you see how translucent these colors are? First of all, I'm using semi-transparent colors, and the reason why I'm using semi-transparent colors is because it allows light to go through the paint and you can see the other layers you know pop on it it's got more of a rich color and more depth to the paint as opposed to if i just went opaque color like this red here which will give me a little bit more of a muddy muddy color so um values okay so values I'm starting out with a mid value, meaning value of one will be white, a value of 10 will be black. I'm starting somewhere in the middle range. The reason I'm doing that is because I wanna have that flexibility of being able to go darker or a little bit lighter if I want to. I can push these colors a little bit, you know, either way. And sometimes this mid value is really, I know it's helped me a lot because some of it, I will let, let it show through, um, the painting as, a, the prog as it progresses with the different stages, I will let some of the base color show through. It just adds visual, visual texture. That's why I go with the middle value. I don't go t totally dark right away. First of all, acrylics won't be able to go totally dark right off the bat unless you're using straight black, which I uh, suggest you don't do. So, um, but anyhow, that's the reason why. So that's, that's the part about value. It's more, the values are more important actually than the colors you're putting down because the values will determine, you know, depth and the painting distance and all that and makes the painting a little bit more believable. So let me more burnt sienna. I really need that burnt umber. Maybe not. Let me see if I, what I can do here. So let me. I probably I won't need it. Let me just paint the edge of that bank here. Some darks. And there's some sienna. Let's go a little bit of orange. I'm being lazy, so I'm using a little bit of a cat orange to facilitate. I could have just mixed red and yellow, but I have a little bit of this cad orange left, so I just might as well use it up. Um, as you notice, I have not used any white as of yet. All right, this, shoot. Uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. And just like oil paints, you know, uh, I'm starting out really thin. There's like the shadow of the egret here and some darker colors here. But I got to let some of this dry first before I could go any darker. Now, each subsequent color um, layer, the paint will get, you know, I'll be able to make it darker and darker and darker. All right, so here for the water, we got like this uh brownish green color maybe even add a little bit of that red light there you go that murky kind of greenish color and notice the textures okay i'm leaving that in i'm not trying to make it perfectly flat those textures are gonna come in handy. Just all you have to do is follow the direction or the contour of the subject, okay? 
the water's got ripples like this, you know, it's going this kind of fashion. So I'm using that to my advantage, a little bit of burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of red towards the bank, maybe a little bit of yellow. Shallow water, I don't know what's over here, but it looks like some more reflective colors. Maybe a little bit more red to this. There you go. Here, mix it in together a little bit. Boom, all right. So I basically got all the whites knocked out here. So now we can go a little bit more in depth with the second part of this. So what I wanna do now uh, is knock out most of my darks. So which means right here, let me show you the picture. In this general vicinity here, I'm gonna knock this out here and then just work my way up and then, you know, do the contours of the bird and uh, whatnot. All right, so let's go just straight burnt sienna. Lots of ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of alizarin. All right, so notice how much darker I'm, I'm able to get. Now remember, acrylics, you work in stages, all right? It's not meant to be, it's not like working with, um, what is it, gouache. And notice, which, which is, you know, really opaque. Uh, notice the, the stroke direction up and down, right? I'm just following. I'm just following my subject here. The reeds are going up and down. I'm not gonna make strokes, you know, or, or what some people will tend to do, the reason I'm trying to get to, sorry, I'm trying to paint and try and teach at the same time. The, the thing is some people will try to do a gradients first, paint everything in gradients, and then just, you know, do the grass like this afterwards. I just go directly with, with the, with the subject, you know, I try to paint and use the strokes in the direction of the subject itself. Okay, if the subject is showing me up and down strokes or vertical, then, you know, I'm gonna use vertical strokes. If the subject is curvy, then you know what? I'm gonna do curvy contours. All right, maybe a little bit more red to the same mix here. Just gen it up a little bit here. And now I just put a little bit of water on my brush there, just a little bit. Just to dampen so paint will move around a little bit. There you go. Now I'm not making it everything the same height. Some will be a little bit higher, some a little bit lower. Some areas are gonna be darker. And I mean, as you can see, and see I'm going in mixing that red that I just, on my palette, going into some of this dark. Now let me just go darker a little bit with this ultramarine blue. I really wish I had put my burnt umber. I don't know what it did. I just I don't want to take time off this video to get it. Uh, I could get it dark. There you go, see? There you go, a little bit darker here. Just using like upward C strokes. Put a lot of paint on my brush there. Upward C strokes. But you want to make sure that the underlying layers are more on a dry side. See, like this is still a little bit wet here. It's not allowing me. Okay. Now here as well, let's, uh, let's work that out a bit. I'm gonna go for my round brush on this part. I'm gonna have a little bit more control over this. So I see like some greenish, 
tones put some red green uh, red and yellow perhaps a little bit of ultramarine I see some I'm just trying to put some of this bluish green wherever I see it and I'll start adding white a little bit later on painting so just off the edge now remember the edge is not perfectly straight okay so I'm going lower I'm like almost like zigzagging a little bit just to show depth you don't want to have everything on the same plane okay obviously nature does not work that way not everything is like perfectly even let me throw some so this is what we're working on here okay So let me see, I see a little bit of purplish reds, let me make a nice dirty purple by using cad red light and ultramarine blue, it's going to make a nice little dirty purple. Just There you go, just like that, and I'm letting some of the other colors show through. And perhaps maybe a little bit of uh, darker colors. Sienna again, ultramarine blue. Some shadows. And this video will be up for you guys to watch as much as you want once it's posted okay it'll be there forever so long as I'm on Facebook okay and right now I'm just doing mid-tone colors okay just we're not going full-on highlights yet orange yellow maybe a little bit of sienna maybe a little bit of red just trying to find the right color maybe a little bit of white not too much because i don't want highlights yet let me go lower into the water this is sunlight basically um, I'm muting down this muting this orange down a little bit this uh, light and by muting the colors by adding blue what's gonna happen is when I start putting the highlights the highlights are really gonna stand out um, because the colors are surrounding are muted. If you go high chroma, meaning like pure paint, and you try to put a highlight on that, not gonna work out, okay? Two things, if your highlights are not coming out is really pretty much two reasons, right? One, you have either same value, or approximate same values, meaning, you know, same uh, light or darkness, and your highlights are not coming out so that means that, let's say if i put a dot of white here and the dot of white the dot of white is not showing up really well it's not very bright two things either the surrounding colors are not dark enough or the colors that i'm putting that white on is not grayed down enough okay that's two main reason so when you have these highlights and it's like really not showing off look at the surrounding colors all right, it's probably because the values are way too close to each other. All right, next, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Um, let me perhaps start with the bird a little bit before I start putting in these reeds. Um, let me fix something first, hold on. All 
I want to fix around this bird first. Otherwise, I'm going to run into trouble. Okay. And, all right. So let me shape this bird a little bit more here. It's best to do all the corrective measures before you start getting to the finer details obviously because otherwise you're going to run into problems so another thing this picture this reference photo i got off the internet uh this is lynn uh what's her name lynn rogers who put up this picture so lynn thank you for this uh reference photo okay let me start working on some of the uh, the reeds here and then I'll fix the bird afterwards um, so I'm going to use cerulean blue with a little bit of this red here and the reason why this is an opaque and this is like a semi-opaque color and uh, it's going to make like a very muddy muddy purple actually you know what I'm going to have to go with ultramarine blue on this one and this red so I'm doing light strokes I'm using the big brush right now as you can see I'm not even using I'm not even using a liner brush yet the reason I'm doing this is only to give the painting some body okay and after that it's just gonna be like visual texture and remember when you paint with acrylics the colors start out you know light and then they will darken a little bit everywhere there you go just like that and i'm not doing this purple like too light because i want to save that for the actual lighter uh, strokes there you go. let me do a little bit more of this who said painting was easy you know the average uh, painter will make on average about 2,000 decisions in a painting section, uh, painting section, painting session, fun fact. I kind of believe it because you do have to make a lot of decisions. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit more because I want to make, you want to find a brush with, you know, ooh, not good. Um, with a um, sharp edge. Yeah, you know, I'm going to use the liner after this. It's just I was trying to avoid making a lot of strokes. There you go, just... Some tall, some small. If I had more time, you know, if I wasn't doing this video, I'd... I would probably approach it a little bit differently, but because, you know, I know you guys have other things to do. Um, I'm trying to hurry this up and, you know, get to the point quick. Uh, maybe this brush will be enough. Let me see. Yeah, should be good. All right, let me go a little bit of ultramarine blue. Make enough of a paint cerulean. Maybe a hint.
of orange. This orange is very powerful. All right, let's and I'll show you the bird in a minute here. I know it looks very blue, but let me see. I kind of messed up on the head here. It's supposed to be more. Like this. That works. All right. Um, okay. So now I've got that part of the bird. I can start working a little bit more in the background. I just wanted to establish the bird because then, you know, if something is messed up, whatever, I have something to work with as far as fixing it. I'm giving myself leeway. It's more on the bluish side. This is going to be for the reeds in the background there. Wet my brush really good. All right, so. Really soft touches. And these reeds are going everywhere. And, you, you know, obviously you don't have to, you don't have to put every read in there, okay? Just, you're just making suggestions here. You're not, you're not taking a photograph. If you want everything in there, you know, as detailed, well, in that very instance, my friend, start taking photographs. Because this is all about, oh, shit. I'll fix that after. Probably some photographer that jinxed me said, oh, you bastard, this is what you get. I'm not dissing photographers. I love, I love photographies. I do photography myself. But what I'm saying, the point being is that you don't want, you know, the painting to be per perfect is just suggestions. <sighs> I 
maybe a little bit of red and orange, and I'm gonna move on to the bird. Just to give it a little bit more depth Some here, perhaps. I did see some greens back there. Mixing ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cad yellow, maybe hint of orange. There you go, make it a dark green as my base. Use my round brush now. This is a number two round brush. Make some highlights. Okay, bird. Let's work on daddy real quick. All right, I'm gonna start making that little highlights on the contours of the bird, and then we're gonna start working our way down. Um, kind of orangey yellow. So it takes some, a lot of white, hint of orange, hint of yellow. Let me see if I can do this without messing up. It's not a fine tip, but. Nope. Try a different round brush. I added too much water to this. Let's use some of this orange here with a little bit of cerulean blue. Add some cool blues. Now what I'm doing here is basically dry brushing Maybe some reds into this mix, a little bit more white. Add some variation of warm and cool colors. I see some of that down here as well.
maybe some ultramarine blue to that. Okay. Now some lighter colors, just adding variations. Okay. I see some yellow ochre a little bit towards the belly. So what I'm gonna do is probably do it a little bit of orange. A little bit of cerulean blue. Cerulean blue here. Trying to show that underbelly. Another highlight here. Warming up a little bit. Put some water on my brush. Soften the edges a little bit. There you go. All right. Now, I'll finish the beak afterwards. Let me get on some of the other stuff. Take my small round brush again, uh, orange, maybe some red, white, there's some nuances of light. towards the edge of the bank. Maybe add a little bit of blue to that. Even more highlight, red, yellow,
there's some sparkles here around this area. So what I'm doing now is putting down like a really muted color. And when I put these sparkles afterwards, they're really going to shine. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a few minutes if you have time to hang around. Okay. Let me start working on the water here. I know we're kind of pressed for time. So we're going to do yellow, ultramarine blue, a little bit of red, mute, mute it down, turn it a little bit on the brown side, maybe a little bit more blue, some white. Take a brush with a sharp edge. You don't see it very much, um, but we'll fix that. the values are too close you remember what I talked about earlier if your highlights are not showing up is perhaps because your values are too close get a good angle here the darker parts of the ripple See, that's what's nice about acrylic is being able to go back and forth back and forth so I'm talking about the push and pull push and pull Now there's reflection of the bird in the water. So we're gonna go white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Now remember one thing with reflections. If the subject is light on top, the reflection is gonna be dark. If the object is dark, the reflection, the, the reflection is gonna be light, lighter at least. So in this particular instance, the subject is darker. So the reflection is going to be light. So and there's some streak of light. Now I could go a little bit lighter on some areas. Once the paint dries, I'll be able to better judge how light this reflection needs to be. I'm at a weird angle here. There you go. Okay, so let me, you know, just for extra pop, let me put some highlight, um, some sparkles. Lately I've been to painting sparkles in the water. Then I'll wipe them off up and down. While I'm at it, might as well teach you how to do the sparkles, right? Wipe up or down, whichever way you want. Side, up, down, side. 
Okay. Now let me put some pure yellow, a hint of pure yellow. Thick amount of white and put a dot right in that circle here. And don't touch it. Actually, I don't like this one here very much. Just go pure white. Because the water's not that dark. So I'm just gonna go pure white. I thought maybe just adding the yellow would have been enough, but nope. Now the bank has some water, some some sparkly effects here and there. Red and white is what I'm using now. Red with a lot of white. A little bit of highlight and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna finish the bird. I know you guys are dying to see that one done. Nuance of leaves. grasses here there you go let's make the beak um, red orange make it a nice bright beak let's see kind of screwed up over here a little bit put a little bit of water on my brush and voila problem fixed put 
got some nuance of blues. Okay, so let me fix that bottom highlight. Let's fix the beak a little bit. Make it look a little bit more believable. And I'm using a lot of the big brushes, as you can see, put the highlight on that beak. Put a lot of water on my brush. Hopefully I don't screw this up. for now. I can always go back and fix this later. Right now it works. Makes a dark black here for the eyes. Let's do the legs. All right, let me see which way the legs are going. Use my trusty old shock. Okay. Close up when you can. Oh, okay. I will try to so I'm going to use this chalk to um, to see how my legs are going to go. Let me see. I see one going up like this. Uh, hold on. One going, eh, doesn't look right. Okay, so, so what's nice about using chalk? So one is going straight down. The other one's following like this. There you go. So let me make a dark purple. Let's make a lizard crimson. Actually, I should use that ah, dried up lizard crimson. 
ultramarine blue into white burnt umber so let me see if I can do this correctly Let me remove the chalk. Just put some water in your brush. Chalk be gone. And when this painting is dry, which will be in like about 20 minutes, when you put some um, gloss to it, it's really going to pop. All right, I see some blue highlight. That upper leg needs to be a little bit darker. This one over here, since it's in the back. There you go, blur it out a little bit. That's it. Oh, you know what? Let me, one last thing, I promise, one last thing. The highlight on the back of the bird. There you go. That's it. Done. Not going to mess with this anymore. Wait, I lied. There you go. Done. Sign my name. And then I'm going to give you the close-up shot. Sometimes it's important where you place your signature.
Money shot, baby. All right. Guys, thank you for sitting through all this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'm usually pretty prompt. And once this video loads up, I'll be able to uh, start commenting on this for you guys. So go ahead and place your comments and then I'll uh, work it out with you. But again, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. You guys have been always great to me. I'm going to try from time to time to do these uh, little videos for you guys just on Facebook and then load it up on YouTube later. So at least you get like a premiere look through my trials and tribulations and through my failures and successes. Um, but anyway, that's part of art. You know, you don't always win. So with that, I'll tell you guys good night. Love you all, and hopefully see you on the next video. This painting, as a matter of fact, will be up for sale. If you're interested, leave it in the comments or send me a direct message, and I will put you down as someone who's interested, first come, first serve. Love you all. Have a great night, guys.